My name is uh, Fred McIntosh. I'm at Rice University in Houston in chemical engineering and uh, physics. Hi, my name is Tani Liverpool. I'm from the University of Bristol in the School of Mathematics. My name is Silke Henkes. I'm uh, from the University of Leiden, the uh, Institute for Theoretical Physics. Hi, my name is Buddha Chakravarti. I am from the University of Sheffield, the Department of Physics and Astronomy. Hi, my, my name is Christoph Schmidt. I'm from Duke University in the United States, and I'm affiliated with the Physics Department, but I'm also, I'm also affiliated with Biomedical Engineering and Biology and Mechanical Engineering, actually. My name is Tomohiro Sasamoto from Tokyo Institute of Technology in Japan, uh, Physics Department. So our program is aimed at developing new statistical mechanics to understand biological phenomena. Statistical mechanics is a theory that is applicable to systems having many degrees of freedom that are in thermal equilibrium. Um, so these theories have been applied to explain material properties of soft materials like DNA, polymers, uh, colloids, membranes, gels, and liquid crystals. So as uh, one would be tempted to use these theories to explain biological phenomena, because many biomolecules are composed of such uh, molecules, like DNA is a polymer, cell membrane is a membrane, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, and more interestingly, uh, biological systems consume energy and do work, and therefore they are truly non-equilibrium systems. So therefore, what theories have been developed to understand soft materials cannot be applied to understand biological systems. So this is what we, this is the challenge that we address in our program by bringing together mathematicians and statistical physicists and biologists and with the aim to understand phenomena that span several orders of magnitude in length and time scales starting from the subcellular level to all the way to cellular and aggregation of cells like tissues and time scales ranging from femtoseconds that tends to, that's 10 to the power minus 15 all the way up to years so uh, therefore with this aim we have of course this needs to be done it's a complicated phenomena and needs to be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis therefore we have four themed workshops throughout the duration of the program the first one is aimed at building a bridge between non-equilibrium stat mech and biology the second one is on active matter theories and its applications to cells and collections of cells as in tissues. The third one is the application of phase separation in formation of biological condensates. And the fourth one is on non-equilibrium self-assembly and understanding the replication cycle of a virus. In addition to this, we have an open for business event which is focused on modeling cell walls, starting from bacterial cell walls all the way to plant and fungal. The bacterial cell walls are particularly interesting because many of the drugs that target bacteria attack these cell walls. So there are applications of these um, uh, theories that we, we are going to be developing. We hope that understanding in the living world will provide challenges which will simulate new statistical mechanical theories. And while current research in the field will also provide new insights to understand biological phenomena. So in the last 10 to 15 years, there has been remarkable progress in the amount of data really which is accessible from biology. So for example, if a collaborator works on tissue mechanics and embryomorphogenesis in the field of light sheet microscope, where you can track every individual cell and every junction in there, with minute precision over a time frame of several hours. And so you can also label things in different colors and so on. So there is terabytes of data available there now. There's, so this is now a very exciting time to develop theoretical approaches for these systems, uh, to develop the biology, which is in particular the topic of the second uh, workshop, which has finished here for this program. So we have enough information of sufficient quality and also to use more sophisticated statistical approaches uh, to look at this, including new avenues such as machine learning. And uh, one strand of our program in here in particular is active matter. So there's the physics and mathematics of things which can move on their own. 
and this in the last again 10 to 15 years it has shown that it can do some very interesting things like flocks uh, mo moving topological defects swarms pattern formation and we think the time is really ripe to use this approach and use it on some of these uh, some of these systems like um, again embryogenesis or chromatolysates in biology or cytoskeleton so we think the time is ripe to bring these approaches together so an overall theme uh, first of the of the program uh, has been to build bridges between essentially physical science and mathematics approaches to try and understand living systems. Uh, but it is very important to remember that that bridge is bidirectional. And so that means, for instance, we have many participants who come in with the idea of trying to address and understand living systems using quantitative and predictive approaches of physics or mathematics. Uh, but we also have people whose primary interest is in the new physics or mathematics even that can come by addressing challenges in living systems. And so one uh, approach or philosophy that a lot of the people coming from the more physical sciences have is nicely summarized by um, a quote due to Richard Feynman. I'll probably not remember the exact quote, but it's been mentioned several times in the, in the meeting here, um, which is um, that I cannot understand anything that I can't build. I think it's actually in the reverse, the way he says it, but something to that effect. It basically means that um, if you really understand something and how it works, you should be able to build it up from scratch, so to speak. And that nicely summarizes a sort of reductionist approach that those of us more on the physical sciences uh, side take to things. But living systems are complicated, and that brings in definite new challenges. Yeah, I would start by saying that even... Even uh, normal systems that are not uh, living, like uh, a piece of wood or a piece of metal, is typically so complex because it has uh, macroscopic, on macroscopic scale, so many parts, so many atoms, that we can't follow them all you know, in time and see what they do and where they are. So the strength of classical physics has been to be able to simplify systems and sort of um, look at a balloon filled with, filled with gas or a piece of metal or a crystal like a diamond and kind of ignore the details of every, what every atom is doing and find collective parameters like temperature, pressure, volume, bendability, or flexibility, and so forth, that can very well describe the macroscopic uh, behavior of such materials without having to know what every single particle is doing at, at every point in time. Now, the big challenge, and that has been a challenge and has been solved you know, for many things in, in classical inanimate physics, but in biology, the big challenge now is to figure out if that is at all possible. And that's not obvious because this complexity that already exists in, in a piece of wood, which is, of course, biological, but, but a piece of metal, um, that complexity is much worse in a way because you have, say, an embryo, and an embryo consists, say, of 1,000 cells at a certain point in time, and each cell expresses thousands of different proteins and nucleic acids and sugars and, and many other molecules. So all of these players are different. And the, the, the sort of thermodynamics that physics has developed is very good at describing a gas which consists of all the same particles, identical particles. But biology doesn't, doesn't offer that. So a big question is, can we find ways to find the same kind of simplicity in biological systems where we can get away from the details, where we don't have to know what every protein is doing at every point in time, and uh, find sort of global parameters, collective parameters that allow us to describe and understand biological systems. And we, we think it may be possible, and this meeting has, all been, has been all about you know, finding uh, such systems where this may be possible and fruitful, but it's not clear in, in every case. A single DNA molecule, of course, is important for you know, controlling the, the life of a cell, so it's, it's clearly not applying to every situation. But there are systems, uh, for example, in developing embryo, where you have many cells that are moving around, of course, due to their genetic programming and so forth, but in some ways, they can often be described as, say, a solid or a fluid. And there can be a transition from cells being stuck in one place and acting like a solid or moving around and forming new parts of the, of the embryo and acting like a liquid. Like the same happens, for example, in cancer. You can have a, a solid tumor, which is actually not so bad for you, but it begins, that's, you could describe that as a solid. But if it begins to, metas begins to metastasize and uh, turns into a liquid, if you want, and a sort of liquid and moves around the body, that's very bad. So this kind of phase transition uh, is one example of where one could 
find a simple physical description to do, to explain something very complex in in, uh, in a living um, living animal or living material. Another example that I have been thinking about, and also people here are thinking about, are there will be another program actually in October, a special <coughs> special uh, day where where this will be the focus. Are cell walls and cell walls of bacteria are especially important because it turns out many antibiotics, uh, the penicillin type uh, antibiotics, attack enzymes that build the cell wall of bacteria, <coughs> interfere with the building of the cell wall. But you don't quite understand how the cell wall works. It's a non-equilibrium active material that's constantly growing, but it can withhold very high pressures, internal pressures of many atmospheres. And so we like to understand the physics of these polymer uh, cell walls built out of polymers uh, and how we can interfere with that and, and when we understand them maybe also help in developing new antibiotics that can you know stave off the, the next uh, really threatening uh, medical problem in this world, namely uh, multidrug resistant bacteria that are probably going to be the next big threat after this you know COVID virus uh, epidemic that we just had. So there's many more of these examples but we hope of course in meetings like this to find some easy ways into the physics of living systems where we can apply the simplicity and the simplifying principles of, of physics to make progress. Yeah, just to return to the phase transition idea, that's a very nice example of a essentially physics and material science idea, which is becoming quite fruitful in different ways in addressing uh, living systems. You mentioned fluidization versus solid behavior in tissues and in development. Uh, there have been some very exciting new developments identifying um, organelles within cells, which everyone used to think had to have membranes around them. They're membraneless organelles. Um, and the understanding of that very hot and interesting field right now um, comes from, the, uh, from understanding phase transitions. That's another bridge, if you like, between the two. We imagine that the topics addressed in this program will change the way research in medical sciences and, and the biological sciences is done in the long term. Uh, because we've, know, we've known that in, in the recent years, there's been an, an explosion in the amount of data collected in biological systems at the scale of the cell and the tissue, which is um, primarily the scale which this program has addressed. And um, for these, uh, for, this, for these systems, this large amount of data requires that, you, that ex people who do experiments find ways of integrating this large amount of data into a way that they can interpret in a useful way. And, and we think that some of the themes that we're going to address in this six-month program are going to be very helpful for this in the long term. So a key idea that's, that's permitted this program is the idea of physics-based mathematical models um, highlighting the importance of understanding over simply predictive ability because a model which generates understanding generates great flexibility in the ability to apply it to other problems because um, whilst if you, if you have a model which is purely predictive sometimes that's, that can be rather inflexible. A, a particular focus of the program has been the importance of mechanical as well as chemical um, ingredients in describing biological systems at the cell and the tissue scale. Um, this has um, implications for improving our understanding of chronic diseases like cancer and better understanding of clinical interventions for things like wound healing. And for example, in the program, we had talks on using, um, including mechanics into models of cancer cell invasion into tissue. There have been many examples where uh, developments in physics and mathematics proceeded in hand in hand, like uh, quantum mechanics and Hilbert space. Uh, physical theory, which is more directly related to our program, is statistical mechanics. Since basic notions of equilibrium statistical mechanics had been founded long time ago by people like Boltzmann, Gibbs, there have been many developments on phase transitions, spin glasses, and uh, non equilibrium systems. And the many developments in physics are associated with those in mathematics. Now, in living systems, which are the subject of our program, there are new aspects 
which have not been taken into account so much in mathematical studies. For example, living systems have certain activity, which means that uh, each constituent of system consumes energy to make a self-propelled motion, and this leads to much richer behavior and uh, interesting behaviors <coughs> uh, compared to conventional non-equilibrium systems. So it is quite in uh, challenging and interesting to formulate the fundamental principles of these systems and try to understand their intriguing properties. More concretely, establishing hydrodynamic equations, understanding fluctuations like uh, large deviations, finding simple models uh, which uh, can be analytically tractable, so they will lead to again new uh, mathematic uh, develop developments in mathematics. And uh, we, we are feeling that uh, our program is playing the role of a platform to make such uh, new collaborations. This is a really exciting time. We have seen, we are already seeing that um, collaborations are beginning to germinate between participants here who are soft matter theorists and uh, mathematicians and biologists. And in addition, there are several synergies with ongoing programs at the Newton Institute, for example, the mathematics of movement, the uncertainty quantification and stochastic modeling in materials. Uh, we are currently exploring that. And we hope that the theories that we are going to develop in these workshops are going to shape the next set of ideas in understanding biological phenomena.